So let's start with my predictions. My predictions are, in my opinion, he says, I've been adding a caveat so you can't see me. In my opinion, there are a number of things that are going to happen with auto enrolment. Number one, some businesses will fail because of the complexities and the costs involved in auto enrolment. Some businesses will fail because of auto enrolment. Number two, this is stage one of auto enrolment. It will get more complex and it will get more costly as time goes by. In later years, the government will remove the chance to opt out and will make workplace pensions compulsory. And when it comes to who's got all the responsibilities, it's been passed down from government and everybody else, and well, I'm sorry, but you as the employers, well, you're at the bottom. You haven't got anybody to pass it to. All the responsibilities are going to be the employers. You won't be asking your staff, would you like to join the pension scheme? You won't be asking them, how much would you like to pay in? Or, which pension provider would you like to use? Or, which fund do you want to invest in? Or, when would you like to retire? Or, can I share your personal information? You will be making all of those decisions. And you will be coming up to the appropriate members of staff and saying, congratulations, here's your pack. You're in the pension scheme. What if you get it wrong? Well, contrary to the slide, it's not quite as drastic as that. The pensions regulator, they're the body who's been charged by the government to introduce workplace pensions. The pensions regulator has, can, if you put your head in the sand and don't get it sorted, fine you, for most people in this room, for most employers in this room, somewhere between 500 and 2,500 pounds a day. So if you think, well, 500 pounds a, year, uh, a day, it takes you a week to sort it out. What's that then? Three and a half, I'm not very good with figures, I'm only a financial advisor. Three and a half thousand pounds, is it? Sure, we had that one out before, I'm written it on my hands all the time. Three and a half thousand pounds, fine, because you've not got your workplace pensions right. And if they've decided fines don't work because you still don't sort it out, they'll send you to prison for two years because you didn't sort out your auto enrolment scheme. Staff are on performance related pay, not your staff, the staff who are running the penalty regime. Being farmed out to capita, the more they fine employers, the more they get paid. Mm. Anyway, moving on from that. In the first year of auto enrolment, when the large employers did it, like Tesco's, etc., there were 83 schemes set up, there were 89 investigations into those 83 schemes. Dunelm got it wrong. Now, they were uh, at a point whereby the pension regulator were, was be, feeling uh, uh, very benevolent and they said, don't worry about it, just sort it out. They didn't issue any fines to Dunelm because Dunelm then sorted it out. But if Dunelm's got all the payroll and HR support in order to get this right, well, how are we going to cope? Things are getting tougher for employers. From October 2012, when auto enrolment first came in, to June 2014, there were 14 statutory notices were issued by the, the pensions regulator. You've not got it right, get it right. From July 2014 to September 2014, there were 163 statutory notices. They're not, be, uh, not quite as, uh, as chummy as they, uh, as they used to be with the pensions regulator. They're getting a bit harsher on employers now. Surely there's help out there. Well, yes, there is. There's plenty of it. And the pension regulator has got a really good website, and in your pack, we'll be referring you to the pensions regulator website. The help is made up of, this is not the web pages that you have to read, these are the downloadable guides that you need to read, understand, and implement. This is 580 pages. I've not printed them all up, they're all blank. But I've just done the first, that's the first, that's the, that's the first page. There's 580 pages here. I don't know about you, I haven't got time to read five, five, and understand 580 pages. But if you're going to do it yourself, you need to understand, need to read and understand that. The help is out there, but it's just there's a lot of it. Right, so, main employer duties. 
You need to design your workplace pension. You need to implement your workplace pension. And you need to run your workplace pension. How difficult can that be? It's only three things. Well, let's look at those in just a little bit more detail. So we have a look at design first of all. In summary, when you're designing your workplace pension, you need to find out your staging date. The first thing to do, your staging date, there's always plenty of uh, jargon in pension, but your staging date is the date, your deadline, for when you need to be ready to switch your workplace pension on and start contributions. You need to assess your workforce. Because you, all your workforce, depending on their age and depending on the wage, you have different responsibilities towards them. You need to decide on your contribution structure. There's four main minimum contribution structures, and you need to find out which one's right for you and your business. You need to choose a pension provider, because there's good ones out there. And how do I say this politely? There's some not so good ones out there. You've got to recommend, get this, you've got to, you, you've got to recommend an investment fund for your employees to pay into. And then finally, you've got to understand your options. There's things like postponement, salary exchange, etc. that you need to understand as an employer. And which ones to use and which ones not to use, and when to use them and when not to use them. Implementing, implementing even, implementing your scheme. It's a new word. You need to register with the pensions regulator on their website, details are in your pack, to get email alerts. You need to communicate changes to staff. This is really important. You need to tell staff what's happening, when is it happening, why is it happening, and how is it going to affect them, and what their new, um, their new rights are. You need to make sure your payroll links up with your new pension provider. Check your employee data to make sure that's up to date, accurate and in the right format. But it's even as stupid as, in your spreadsheet, it says Mr. The, um, the, the pensions provider needs a spreadsheet that says Mr. Dot. And if you're not sending the right spreadsheet in the right format, then it gets rejected, comes back onto your desk, you've got to find it, deal with it, sort it out again. You need to make sure that you get this right. When it comes to running your workplace pension, you will need to reassess certain staff every time you run payroll. Every time you run payroll. Somebody who's an entitled worker has a spike in earnings, or all of a sudden they're an eligible job holder, your, your responsibilities and duties change to them, you need to write out to them, tell them what that is and what their options are, all that kind of stuff. You will need to deal with people who opt in. I want to join the scheme, it looks absolutely fantastic. Or I want to opt out, I can't afford it, or whatever. You will need to deal with join-ins that aren't the same as opt-ins. You will need to deal with refund of pension contributions. If you've paid money into the, uh, taken money out of their pay, paid into the pension, but they opt out within a month, then you'll need to refund the contributions that you've already taken out. You'll need to issue statutory communications, because you'll need to keep staff informed. You've got certain 33 employer duties that you've got to work uh, to fulfil. You'll need to complete your declaration of compliance with the pension regulator. And we've, shown, we've got, uh, again, in the pack, there's a template of the sort of information that you need to let them have, and when you need to let them have it. You will need to re-enrol people, people who decide, I'm going to opt out. I've automatically been put in the scheme, I'm going to opt out. You've got to keep a record of those people, because every three years you've got to opt them back in again. Annual review of your pension provider and your investment fund. So not only have you got to kind of choose a pension provider and investment fund at the start, you've got to annually review, although well, they still suitable, should I be doing different ones? And you've got to keep up to date with auto-enrolment changes. But before we do, we do that, what happens next? You need to decide, am I going to sort out workplace pensions myself, or am I going to get some advice? Only you can make that decision. It's not to me to make it. It's not Linda's choice. It's not Julian's choice. It's your choice. You've got to decide with the pack I'm going to get, or the pensions regulator's guides, or whatever it is, I'm going to do it, or... I'm going to get somebody to come and project manage it for me. You decide that.
There are other advisors out there. I'm not going to disparage all of them, but Sage are quite proactive at the moment. Uh, that sounds like I'm going to dis disparage Sage, isn't it? No, that's not the case. Sage are really good in bits that they do, but they only get involved in like payroll and staff communications. Like your accountant will be extremely useful when it comes to costing and how do you cost uh, the, uh, the effect of auto enrolment. Well, we do all of it. Yes, we might draw on the experience and help of accountants. We might refer you to the fact that you need to speak to your payroll department, but we'll help you from start to finish. We'll help minimise the destruction and the costs of auto enrolment. Because as we've seen, there's quite a few. And we'll allow you to concentrate on what you're good at, running your business. That's what we want to do really, isn't it? Nobody's asked for auto enrolment, but it's here. We've got to get it done. Might as well get it done right.